guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. As you can hear by the cacophony of noises behind me, it is almost dinner time here in my house. In today's video, I'm gonna take you guys along with the week of dinners I have made. This week, I've been focusing on trying to do mostly like a protein and veg, easy meals that I can follow while on my health and weight loss journey. I do follow the WW plan, so I will list all WW points down here. Recently, I've just noticed how good I feel when I eat just like a simple piece of protein and veggies on the side, making up most of my meal rather than having as many carbs at night. That's not to say I'm against carbs. You guys know I'm all about balance during my health journey. I eat carbs, fast, proteins, but I was interested in what meals I could come up with that were variations on the protein and veg mainly for dinner. And I've been focusing more of my carbs in the morning afternoon. And I've been feeling really good this week. So tonight, if you can hear them sizzling in the pan, I have some burgers going for our two kids. However, my husband and I are going to do a little twist. We are doing Big Mac salads. I have shared this before on my channel. They're one of our go-to all-time favorite dinners. So come along and see what we've eaten this week while following WW, focusing on high protein and vegetable dinners. I have some really delicious meals to share with you guys. First step is browning some ground beef. This is 80-20. I have half a pound in here because it's just my husband and I eating these salads tonight. Um, I will measure it after it's cooked though to figure out my points for the salad. So anyway, just browning this, it is seasoned. I just seasoned it lightly with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Super basic, like anything you would use to um, season up your burgers. If you have a certain burger seasoning you like, add that in, because again, we want all the flavor of a nice juicy burger in this salad. Once cooked through, um, just strain off any grease, whatever your preferred method is. I just like to use some paper towel with some tongs and I just kind of blot up any of the excess grease out of there. I like to do this step first because that way it gets to cool down a little bit in the pan. I don't know why, I have a weird thing about like hot meat protein on a cold salad. I want this to cool off a little bit to be more room temp by the time I put it on top of the salad. The rest of the salad is so simple. I'm gonna chop up some of this head lettuce. I like to chop mine pretty fine so you get nice little bites and it's not like too big pieces. Um, I'm gonna dice some yellow onion. This is going on top of the salad as well as mixed into the dressing. I have shredded cheddar cheese. Um, I just shredded a whole block the other day to use in recipes and stuff this week so it's in a Ziploc bag. And then of course, we cannot forget our dill pickles on our burger. So these are gonna get chopped. Since we're making the salad for two, I'm probably gonna use about half of this head of lettuce. Save the other half for salad another night. It's getting closer to midnight. I tried to get closer to you. Drinking courage from my red cup now. I will soon make a move. This is a pretty big yellow onion, so I'm just gonna use about a quarter of it. Again, we're gonna dice that down nice and fine. I did about three quarters of that into the salad, and now this much I'm gonna leave to the side because we're going to mix that in with our Big Mac salad dressing. And finally, yeah, chop up some pickles. This is like five or six um, dill pickle spears, about the size of a whole dill pickle. Um, again, pickles are zero points on the WW plan. They're a great way to add a ton of flavor to your food, with a nice acidic crunch with little to no points. So. Pickles are a great thing to add into recipes. We also love adding banana peppers if we have them home. Essential to the salad being a Big Mac salad, of course we need that classic Big Mac sauce. Here's everything I'm using to make our dressing for today. It's a base of mayonnaise and some plain on fat Greek yogurt. You could also swap this out for some blended cottage cheese that would add great protein and a little bit of a thicker consistency. Um, I like doing that as a blend. I have yellow mustard, ketchup, red wine vinegar, and of course 
course, I have that diced onion from earlier. And then for seasonings, some garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. That's it. We're going to add all of that together in this bowl, mix it up, and then we can build our salad. I like to keep anything that has points for WW separate. That way, Josh and I can build our own bowls based on our preference. Um, in here is just all of our zero point foods, the lettuce, the onion, the pickles. I mean, you have that a toss, and then we can build our bowl starting with that add however much measured out ground beef we want, cheese, and then of course the dressing at the end. One more item you could add directly to your sauce is either more chopped up pickles or if you have some sweet relish home. Um, I'm skipping that step today because I don't have any at home right now, but that's okay. Um, I did put a tiny little splash of pickle juice right in here just for that added pickly flavor. Um, yeah, but that part's kind of optional, but I do think it helps bring all of the pickle Big Mac flavor in. And here is our Big Mac salad. So delicious. Is it a burger? No. Is it a salad? Yes. Does it kind of help curb that craving of wanting like a big old Big Mac burger? I think so. Super satisfying, super tasty. And it came together really fast. This is a great weeknight meal. Sometimes if I'm wanting to up my protein even more on this without, you know, a bunch of extra stuff, I'll plop a big old dollop of cottage cheese right on top. I love cottage cheese on salads. I know the texture isn't for everyone, but I really like it. It adds a creaminess. I feel like I get to cut back on dressing a little bit when I do that. So I might go ahead and pop a little bit of that on my salad. But here's a look at the other recipes that we made this week. This next recipe may have been my favorite one of the week. It's sticky honey garlic chicken thighs with a side of steamed broccoli. My family also loved this one. I started by making my glaze, which was a third cup of honey. Fun tip when you're working with honey and you have to measure it out, give your measuring cup a little spritz of avocado oil. It'll create some slip. So after you pour the honey in and then pour it into the bowl you're using, it should slide right out without having to use a spatula and try getting all the nooks and crannies of that measuring cup and lose a lot of honey. Honey's expensive, so you want all that you're measuring in that cup to go into your recipe. Then I added a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of some smoked paprika, and and a tiny sprinkle of some red pepper flake. I didn't want to make this too spicy since my kids were eating it too. But if you like spice, go for it, add a little more. Next, I added in a third cup of red wine vinegar. Apple cider vinegar also works really well, whichever you have on hand. And a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. We garlic with love around here, the more the better. I gave that a good stir and set it aside. And then I seasoned my chicken thighs with salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. You could have easily done six chicken thighs for this recipe, but I had four left over in the fridge, but these were some pretty big juicy thighs. So it actually fed my whole family pretty well. The girls ended up splitting one and Josh and I each had one and a half. In a heavy bottom pot or skillet on your stove, I used my Dutch oven. I just sprayed a little bit of avocado oil on the bottom. I plopped my seasoned chicken thighs right in there and started browning them on one side. And while that started to brown, I went ahead and got my steamed broccoli ready. This is a bag of frozen broccoli. It is a steamable bag, but it's already open because I just used part at a time. I just popped what was left in a glass container with a little bit of water and microwaved it for about four minutes. After a minute or two on medium high heat, I was able to flip my chicken thighs. I just want to get them a little bit brown on each side before going in then with my honey garlic sauce. This is going to thicken up and bubble as the chicken cooks in it. I'm going to glaze all over with a nice sticky coating. I flipped them a couple times over about eight minutes to build up that sauce on the outside and made sure the chicken cooked all the way through reaching an internal temperature of 165 before I pulled them to rest on my cutting board. Then I just sliced them up, measured out the portion I wanted, and served with my steamed veggies. 
For the kids, I added some applesauce pouches and rice. Since this is something new they're trying, we always add a few familiar things. So steamed broccoli, rice, and applesauce, all very familiar for them. Nora, how's the chicken? Good. It is good. She aced it. Lila's still unsure about it, but she's trying it, right? Are you trying new things? Yeah, and you got stuff you do like. She's eating actually quite a bit of it. And Dad's almost done. <laughs> I'm guessing you liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Another great fast weeknight meal. I'm pulling out the use of my crock pot. I'm doing a chicken stir fry. So in this small crock pot, I put two boneless skinless chicken breasts, a third cup of reduced sodium soy sauce, about a teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of some ground ginger. I gave the chicken a couple flips to make sure it was coated well and there was some moisture still at the bottom of the crock pot. I probably could have added a half cup of water just to make sure the chicken didn't get too dried out. I would probably do that next time. And then I set it on low for eight hours and just let it cook all the way through. And by dinner time, the chicken was perfectly marinated, cooked all the way through and shred easily with a tongs. I mixed up more of the same seasonings I used to coat the chicken into a little simmer sauce, added the shredded chicken sauce and a package of frozen stir fry veggies. This one was snap peas, carrots, onions, and water chestnuts, covered it with a lid and let it all come together until the veggies were steamed through and the chicken was soft and the sauce coated everything. I had some leftover rice from the night before that my husband ate his on top of, but if you're looking for a lower carb substitute, cauliflower rice is also great underneath this dish. This next night was truly a meat and veg dinner. So easy came together really quickly. And honestly, I repeat this like once every week or every other week, but sometimes we switch out the protein. So I'm doing two vegetable side dishes. I have some air fryer roasted Brussels sprouts. I sprayed them with a little avocado oil, seasoned with some salt, pepper, garlic blend from Kinder's, and then air fry them at 375 for 12 minutes in the air fryer. And in that 12 minutes that those are cooking, we're gonna get the rest of this dinner done. I had two ribeye steaks that I seasoned simply with some pink Himalayan salt. I made sure to pat the steaks really dry before adding them to my frying pan. I seared them on both sides. I like to do a method where I do three minutes, flip them three minutes, Flip them one more time and do another two to three minutes. And this all depends on the thickness of your steak. It may have to adjust, but the best way to get that perfect steak is just to keep checking the internal temperature. I like to pull mine off to rest when it hits like 135 to 137. I add a sprinkle of flaky sea salt and let those rest a full 10 minutes. So they maintain all of their moisture and reach that full internal temp for medium rare, which is 145 Fahrenheit. The Brussels are still going and the steak is resting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean and fully dry my portobello mushrooms. And then I slice them about a quarter of an inch thick. I don't want them too thin because I want them to have a nice bite to them. These are going back in the same pan that I cooked the steak in to absorb some of that flavor. Don't overcrowd them and make sure to keep stirring. That's how you're gonna get a nice browning. I cook mine for about five minutes. By then our Brussels are perfectly charred up the steak has rested and is ready to be sliced. And you can definitely enjoy steak on your health journey. I like to trim mine really well of any extra fat, slice it, and then I always use my food scale to measure out a portion that keeps me on track while enjoying something I really love. If you're not a steak person, easily swap this out with a really nice piece of salmon or even a piece of grilled chicken. It's just a simple protein and veg kind of dinner. And the last recipe I have to share with you guys for dinner this week was a Tuscan chicken sheet pan meal. I love sheet pan meals. They are so easy. You prep the items, sauce them, pour them out on a sheet pan, bake them in the oven, minimal dishes, and they always come out so tasty. So for today's sheet pan meal, I have three boneless skinless chicken breasts and I just slice them up kind of into tender shape. I added those to a bowl with some washed and trimmed green beans and a pint of cherry tomatoes. Of course, going in with a big old heaping spoonful of minced garlic. And then for seasoning, I'm going in with a quarter cup of olive oil. Sometimes I use a spray of avocado oil, which is zero points instead. But other than the dressing and a little bit of Parmesan cheese, the rest of the meal is zero points. So we're gonna splurge on a healthy fat and use some olive oil today. I also went in with a quarter cup of good balsamic vinegar and then seasoned with salt, pepper, 
an Italian seasoning, about a teaspoon's worth. I added a quarter cup of shredded Parmesan cheese, gave it a good stir so the seasonings, oil and vinegar coated everything well. And then dumped it right out on a sheet pan that was lined with aluminum foil for easy cleanup. I just made sure to spread everything out so the chicken didn't overlap each other. And then popped it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. Again, I used my thermometer to make sure the chicken was cooked through. The veggies all came out nice and roasty toasty. A little extra sprinkle of Parmesan cheese and this meal was ready to go. This made delicious leftovers and would be a great meal prep option for the week too. Okay guys, that is what was on the menu for dinner this week. I hope you enjoyed following along today's video. Maybe I gave you some ideas to put on your menu for next week. Let me know in the comments, what are you making your family this week for dinner? If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that thumbs up like button, subscribe if you haven't yet. I have lots more family recipes coming your way. And until next time, bye. bye.